Am I the a-hole for not letting my ex move in, which could cost her custody? Alternate account, fake names too. So when I, 35 male, was 22, I got married to Kristen. We had our son, Sky, 11 male, about a year into our marriage. Things were pretty going well, I felt like. I was working, Kristen was staying home with Sky. Things were tight, but I was able to buy us a home and provide a decent life. I was just getting started in IT, so the money was coming. Just had to be patient. Well, I come home one day and half the stuff is gone. So is Sky and Kristen. At a note on the counter, Kristen said that she wasn't happy with our lifestyle. That she wanted something that wasn't mediocre and wanted to live a good life. She had been seeing someone else and was moving in with him, and that I needed to get a lawyer. We go through a nasty divorce and get split custody. So I remarried a few years later to my current wife, Alana. She's amazing and the most supportive person ever. We have one daughter together. I started my own IT consulting business about five years ago and it's taken off, giving me, my wife, Sky, and Gwen a nice life. My ex has had a string of boyfriends and hasn't remarried. We don't talk at all besides details about Sky. So I got a call a week ago from Kristen. She was asking for a place to stay for a little bit. Her boyfriend was kicking her out, and she didn't have anywhere else to go. She wasn't going to be able to afford a safe place for her and Sky. She asked if she could live in our guest house until she could find a place to live. I basically told her no, that she didn't deserve my charity after walking out on me a decade ago, that she as a mother needs to clean her crap up and provide for him, and that if she wasn't going to be able to afford a safe place to live, then I want to revisit the custody agreement, because I don't want Sky to move into some sketchy apartment or some sketchy guy. But I told her I'd ask my wife and get back to her. My wife hates Kristen, but said she doesn't want Sky resenting us if something happens to his mom. But she really doesn't want my ex living here either and would prefer to revisit the custody agreement in order to give Sky some more stability. So we thought this is our chance to push for solo custody. My mom wants me to consider the message this sends to our son. My dad told me to remember the note on my counter 10 years ago. I do think about what is best for my son in the long run. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Because some people have asked, Yes, Sky loves his mom. She isn't a bad mom to him. We haven't asked his opinion because we are sure he would want her to move in. Edit. We don't want a temporary agreement, because that would lead to more instability for Sky. This would be a final decision. Now for the top comments. This is messy, but I'm going with not stay hall for not allowing your wife to stay with you. She made her bed, and now she has to lie in it. The thing you haven't mentioned is how your son feels about all of this. It's time to have a very frank conversation with him and get his feelings on this matter. This. Your son should be priority number one. I agree that the son should be priority number one, but that doesn't mean ex-wife moving in, because certainly that's what Sky would want. Making your child your first priority doesn't automatically mean they get to make decisions that affect the entire family. His mom put herself in this situation. She needs to figure it out without making it Opie's responsibility. While moving in would allow Opie's ex to keep custody, it would make Opie's family life a living hell, which in the end would be detrimental to Sky as well. People divorce precisely so their kids can have a peaceful environment and not be around two parents that can't stand each other. Changed from not day hall to a mess of you're the a-hall based in Opie's edits and responses. You don't have to completely kick Kristen to the curb by pushing for solo custody. You can help her in another way. The thing here is to do what's best for your son in the long run and that for his mother to be secure. My suggestion is you offer to take your son full-time for maybe six months or so. This will give Kristen time to get a job at accommodations. Allow her to take him for the day on weekends, etc. Once she has life sorted out, custody goes back to how it is now. You're the a-hole. Going for a sole custody or having your ex-wife move in are not your only options and you know it. Not the a-hole for not wanting her to move in, but that doesn't mean that you are not being an a-hole. We go through a nasty divorce and get split custody. It was decided that it was in Sky's best interest to have both parents in his life, and until he is old enough to express a preference, that is what should happen where possible. Having Sky live with you full time while his mother sorts herself out is a very different thing than going for sole custody for the rest of his childhood. 
You could tell your ex that you won't go for sole custody, but she needs to sign paperwork. That Sky will stay with you so that his situation is stable while she sorts herself out. You can both preferably join to explain to Sky that Mummy is having a difficult time at the moment, so he will live with you full time until things are better for Mummy, and then you will go back to the previous arrangement. If he asks why Mummy can't come and live with you, which at 11 he probably won't, you explain that Mummy and Daddy respect each other, but don't get along well so that is only going to make everyone miserable. The message that that sends to your son is that people are responsible for their own actions and consequences of them, but we don't take advantage of other people's misfortune. Edit. Opius added this reply showing his motivations are not about his child's best interest, but what appears to be revenge. He replied just now. No, my ex-wife treats him well. But I'd sooner give money to a slot machine than Kristen. She doesn't get child support, and I wouldn't even pay for a hotel room for her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being openly hostile towards my sister and telling on her, thus potentially making her husband lose custody of his children? I'm not gonna be shy about this. My sister sucks. She is a horrible self-centered person who thinks she's the main character. She is not only a horrible person, she is a step monster. She married this guy, who is a freaking push over her, three years ago. He has two children, ten and six and my sister constantly complains about them, saying things like the six-year-old is gross because he sips too loud or has stained clothing. For the love of God, he is six. That's what a child is supposed to do, and she is so mean to the ten-year-old girl. She acts straight out jealous of her. I've caught her taunting her that daddy loves my sister more than her. She is horrible. I have straight up called her out after trying to talk to her a million times. At Christmas, she was saying that it'd be nice to have the kids there. And I said, why? You hate them. This was when everything was almost over her, and she had been bragging to her friends that her husband had spent more on her than on his daughter. A fight ensued. My parents reprimanded me, but my cousins took my side and called her out, noting every moment that they had witnessed her being horrible. Her husband obviously took her side and said that she was a wonderful stepmother, but the kids love her. To which I said that was a lie, as I had consoled them countless times after they were taunted by my sister. They left, and we haven't talked since. One day I was running errands and run into my step-nephews who were with their mother. I never met her, but honestly, she is wonderful. We decided to have some coffee. While the kids were playing, she asked me how her children behaved, etc. I said they were wonderful, and then I just spilled the beans on my sister. How awful she was, what I've heard her say to the kids, and the inaction of her ex-husband. By the end, she was horrified. She said the kids didn't like her, but she always chucked it up to my sister being the new woman in their father's life. She said the kids never really said anything even when she asked. I then told her I was very concerned for the children, as my sister had straight up told a 10-year-old that it would be better if she disappeared from her father's life. Their mother saw red and asked me if I'd be willing to testify. She said that this was unacceptable and she would be taking their father to court again. I said I would recount the events that I witnessed and could ask my cousins who witnessed a lot too. She was very grateful. I asked my cousins who were all willing to recount the events, but word got around to my parents and by extension my sister. And they have been calling me the biggest a-hole on the planet who would betray family on a whim. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Those kids are clearly being mistreated by your sister and clearly their well-being is being neglected by their father. I'm normally not a fan of people injecting themselves into someone else's relationship, but you're looking out for these children and there's nothing at all wrong with that. To be honest, I don't care about the relationship of her and her ketchup-smelling husband. I feel really, really bad for the kids. Exactly. This is all about the kids, and I will never knock someone who is standing up for kids. In my opinion, there's nothing lower than a person who mistreats children or animals. Not stay home. How awful for those poor children. You are absolutely doing the right thing in protecting them from your sister. You should be prepared for your family to take her side though. In my opinion, if your family is willing to side with her, good riddance. Hopefully, you can still have a relationship with the kids and their mother though. Good job. Only my parents. The rest of my family is as fed up with my sister as I am. She is not very popular these days. You're not day home. 
I don't like when people throw around the word narcissist around here. But your sister sounds like one. To be able to criticize children and be jealous of their relationship with their father? To tell them he loves her more than them? My mother is a narcissist. One of my earliest memories is her telling my sister and me, after our father had tucked us in and told us he loved us more than anything, that he didn't mean more than her, that he would always love her more. I'll never forget that confusing moment in my young life. That woman did damage to all of her children, that she'll never take responsibility for, and that we'll be healing from for the rest of our lives. You offer these kids mother assistance to stop that from happening to her babies any longer. You did a hard thing. You will probably catch crap from family, but I think you did the right thing. You know what's funny? She once went to a psychologist who diagnosed her with NPD. She didn't like the diagnosis. It went to a behavioral therapist who didn't diagnose her at all. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for making my cousin a laughing stock with the pressing of a button? So, I have a cousin who's overly entitled. I'm talking the self-proclaimed gem of the family entitled. Never been told no for as long as I've known her. Anyhow, she knew I recently came into some money and figured she deserved a share. She calls my cell and basically demands a share. I laugh and tell her not a chance. I thought that would be the end of it, but no. She goes off on me big time, saying the most ridiculous entitled crap I've personally witnessed, that she'll get her parents to force me to give her money, how she'll get me disowned from our family, etc. But Watch didn't know I have an app on my phone which records all calls. I had some legal issue in the past regarding family, so I decided it's best to always have a recording of calls. The ones that are innocent I always delete. So I send a recording to a tech-savvy friend and ask him to install a small speaker onto a picture frame which is connected to a button. I get a picture of my cousin and place it in the frame. I put it up onto my apartment wall with a button beside it. So now anytime someone wants a laugh, they can just push the button and listen to her 4-5 to five second over-entitled outburst. It's kind of become the funniest thing. And every time people come over, they just have to push the button just to get a laugh cousin found out about it and basically berated me for making her the laughing stock of the family. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. That's genius. It belongs in one of the revenge subs. The cousin had it coming. Opie's retaliation could not have been better. Hilarious. Not the a-hole. I think this falls under the play stupid games win stupid prizes category. She at least brought the joy of laughter when guests pressed the button. I wouldn't mind getting a stupid prize if it's at the cousin's expense. Butch didn't know I have an app on my phone which records all calls. I had some legal issue in the past regarding family, so I decided it's best to always have a recording of calls. Not stay hold, but you should be really careful about this. Because in 11 states, it's illegal. And it would be horrible to get arrested for outing your cousin as a greedy a-hole. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my girlfriend take my son after his mom begged me to? My ex-wife and I got divorced three years ago. One of the reasons is that she was, still is, married to her job and not me. We have 50-50 custody of our four-year-old son. I met my current girlfriend almost two years ago and we're planning on getting engaged on the end of 2022. My girlfriend adores my son and likes to spend time with him. She'd even let my ex drop my son off at our place because of work. She's a nurse. This occurred several times and although my girlfriend never complained, I just couldn't help feel that my ex was taking advantage of my girlfriend's good nature and basically messing up our custody agreement. The other day, my girlfriend and I were home. My ex-wife called her asking if she could drop my son off for a few hours. My ex-wife was on speaker when she was speaking to my girlfriend on the phone, so I heard from a distance. I took the phone right before my girlfriend could say yes and firmly told my ex-wife no and to stop taking advantage of my girlfriend. She kept on about how she needed to cover this emergency shift right then and couldn't find a replacement on such short notice. I said it wasn't mine and my girlfriend's fault and that she should be ashamed of herself for using my girlfriend like that. My girlfriend kept staring as my ex said that she wasn't using her since she was my son's future stepmom. I said, well, that doesn't make her your personal babysitter for Pete's sake. But she said it's between her and my girlfriend. My girlfriend told me to let my ex-wife bring my son over. 
But if I let it happen again, this will set a precedent for my ex-wife to pull similar stunts in the future. My ex-wife begged, but I told her to get a babysitter. She said something about not finding one, but I hung up and handed the phone back to my girlfriend. My girlfriend looked upset with me and said that none of what I did was called for, that I should have let my ex-wife bring my son over her. I asked if she was fine with being used as a babysitter, and she said that spending time with my son is not like babysitting. I let her know that always saying yes and not setting boundaries won't do her any good. She got more upset and said that I blew this out of proportion and ruined some great time with my son. She went upstairs and acted hurt by how I handled the situation. Though I thought that I was helping her stand up for herself and set boundaries with those who try to take advantage of her. Am I the a-hole? I think there's something wrong. You don't seem to have given any thought to your child's well-being. Won't he be happier with you and girlfriend instead of with a sitter? You don't appear interested in seeing your son. Your ex is a medical professional, and we're in the midst of a pandemic. You seem more interested in exerting control over your ex, girlfriend, and son than actually building relationships. You're the a-hole. What less than full-time parent turns down time with her kid? I assume girlfriend is available, not working at this time, given she was going to say yes. Plus, it's not babysitting, it's step parenting, even when it's not your time. Most of the time you hear people rightfully upset that their significant other is being a bad step parent and not forming a bond. I hope he hits a jackpot and has a very nice girlfriend with a kind mothering nature. And he's complaining. You're the a-hole. I'm not sure your ex is married to her job. She's a nurse during a pandemic. And what kind of father refuses to see more of his child? And if you think your ex is married to her job, why did you agree to 50-50 custody? Why didn't you go for full custody and visitations for your ex? You made decisions for your girlfriend that just assumed she didn't know how to stand up for herself. You were rude to your ex and to your girlfriend in just one conversation. I get the feeling that you're going to be single for a long time. Him putting the work in inverted commas is just extra haunted. Does he think a nurse is lying about having a short notice emergency shift? During a pandemic where health workers are stretched past all reasonable limits.